Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, I heard that you have an itch for the Switch It Up show. My name is Glenn, and I am joined by our good, dear friend and my co-host, as always, Mr. Setrav. How are you this evening, sir? Good to see you, my friend. Oh, it is always good to hear and see you, sir. Uh, We, of course, as always, have a packed show for you today episode 23 of the switch it up show uh, but first before we go ahead and get it started we're gonna go ahead and let these sweet tunes play for just a few only for you And our first segment that we're going to go ahead and roll on into is going to be what we like to call the inventory. Now, the inventory is not a stock of the items that we own, my friends. It is a stock of what we've been playing in the last week. And personally, for myself, I'm going to go ahead and start it off. And I feel like Mr. Trav is going to echo my statements. This last week, I've spent most of my Switch time playing myself a little Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, It's really been like the main game aside, of course, from the two games that we're going to be reviewing that I've had my hands on. Now, Mr. Trav, am I correct in assuming that that has been the game that you've been playing mostly as well? Absolutely, my dude. Um, I had the luck of needing to spend the day in a auto garage, Ooh. having my car tuned up all day Monday. So I sat there with my Nintendo Switch and I did some work on a little Mario. I'm currently at uh, 207. Um... What are they, suns? What are they calling that, suns? Power moons. But that's the term. I think. Uh, Pretty sure. How, how about you? Did, you? did you finish it yet? Oh, no. you crazy. Did I finish the game? All right. Um, I can't. I don't want to spoil it for you. No, though. of course. I know you You normally would. Um, I would. I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm having a great time with that game. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of fun. When I first saw the, uh, the Tyrannosaurus, I was like, oh, please. Please let me <laughs> please let me be able to control that, uh, and I was thankfully. Uh, it was super cool. Uh, I am addicted to getting all of the purple coins. Um, oh, it, dude, right? I've heard that there's different uh, amounts on each level. So uh, in most of the worlds that I've been to so far, it's fifty. But I've heard that it can go as high as a hundred, um, which is kind of a nice. I, I actually found a hundred. Yeah, I mean that's the thing, man. Like I'm not gonna let myself like see it's the numbers right there. I know that they're out there for me to collect. So because that they're there for me to collect, I have to get, I have to get them. You know. Uh, I think the idea is that like every level has fifty power moons on it, and then one level has a hundred. Is that the idea? Like I don't know how many moons there are. I think are. that's the deal. Um, on most, on most. Like if you look in your uh, your inventory, your ooh, map thing, uh, mm-hmm. you can actually see uh, how many stars you have or power moons. Oh well, yeah, they'll tell you how many, but will they tell you how many are remaining in the world? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, they will. All right, well that's kind of helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting because like they do. They... I know one of the worlds only has two. Oh okay. So, they, they do an interesting way of one. like hiding them. Um, like I'm never really sure. They do. Like, huh. like sometimes they're obvious, other times they're not. But either way, game is a ton of fun. Uh, and it's you, amazing. It's it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> you can you can actually go and uh, catch us streaming that game. I actually streamed it last week uh, over on our Twitch, twitch.tv slash Preach Network, or if you just want to go to our website, Preach.us, um, you're going to see uh, more and more Switch content showing up there, uh, and also over on the YouTube uh, in the very near future as well. Absolutely. We're going to create a little section there, a little playlist for everybody. It's going to be the Switch It Up show on the Preach Network's YouTube channel. Yes, sir. Indeed. And since we're talking about switching it up, we'll switch it up and start going right over into the next segment, and that's the news segment, which we affectionately like to call Potent Power Ups. Um, in this segment, we like to talk about some of the news that is going on in the wonderful wide world of Nintendo Switch. Uh, and this little nugget of information I thought was kind of interesting. Did you know, Mr. Trav, that the Switch is actually on pace to beat all, all of the Wii U's sales just this year? Dude, I heard it already did. Dude, that's it's crazy. It's crazy. It actually already beat out uh, the entire lifespan so far of the Wii U. That's absurd because the Wii U, you know, was around for a few years, uh, and like you know, Switch hasn't even really been like a full year yet. Uh, so I feel like the Wii U wasn't around that long though. Like 
three or four years, maybe three years. Yeah, but for the fact that like you know a whole console was able to like outsell it, you know, after it was around for that many years, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. It just goes to show you the demand. Uh, yeah, like, that's out there for the Switch, and um, like I mean they've been they've been selling them so so high. I feel like every week we're talking about how the stock just keeps going up and up and up, like oh, at an all time high happy. earlier this week. I am happy with yeah, my man. earnings. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure they're going to do super well this uh, holiday season. I bought low, bro. I told everybody. That's Pokemon right, Pokemon Go is going to come out. You need to invest in Nintendo. That's right, man. It was worth You're a like, shot. Uh, Jim Cramer. I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> did um, did you? If I if I don't know if my eyes deceived me or not, but I could have sworn that I saw um SNES minis uh, in stock the other day on Amazon. I actually did see that myself, dude. Uh-huh. Um, the SNES Classic is out. It's around. Uh, you can find it. Um, and they're also going to be coming back out with a Nintendo Classic, apparently. That, um, that's awesome, man, because people are getting straight up ripped off left and right uh, trying dude, to find it's that. It's not fair. And it's, uh, it's, it just stinks, man, because people want people want that stuff. And it sounds like Nintendo's doing a good job that maybe this holiday season you might actually might be able to get it if you want it. So Heck, I wanted it. Good stuff, man. Well, there very well may still be time. Uh, and also, according to you know such reputable website as GameRankings.com, <laughs> uh, Mario, the uh, Super Mario Odyssey, is the top-rated game of all time. Uh, what? So that's what they're saying, man. Top-rated game of all time. Uh, so that's a pretty intense what statement. Zelda 64? It does. Yeah, I mean, do you heard me, sir? The top-rated game of was all that, time. Was that, like, the last top-rated game? Like, what's number two now? Well, now you're going to make me pull up the thing. But, like, what do you think? As I do a little uh, little extra research for you, uh, <laughs> where do you think it falls? What's the highest-rated game? I think it's great. I don't know if number one game of all time. Number one game of all time. Here we go. I'm pulling up the all-time best right now. Um, now you have to you have to understand. Um, it's based on uh, some reviews that they pull up. Uh, it does say 44 uh, different reviews for this game, uh, and the number one ranked game of all time, Super Mario Odyssey, 98.17 percent. Okay, followed followed right under it, Super Mario Galaxy. Followed under that, um, Ocarina of Time. Followed under that, Galaxy 2, and followed under that, Breath of the Wild. Top five games. All Nintendo. What? Yeah, two of them on the Wii, um, two of them on the Switch, and one of them on the N sixty four. Weird. Super, super intense. Uh, I don't really know. It's interesting because, like, if you click on like one of the titles here, um, they do link to the reviews, and the reviews are websites like. Well, there's actually they're pulling from like a good amount of like real like websites. Um, like they have all. What'd you say? games.com uh i mean ign is on there nintendo life is on there uh egm GameSpot. um there's a bunch of like actual like real gaming websites on here with all links to the articles so i guess there's like you know averaging all the regular scores that we ever that we always see so if you look at it like that i mean i guess it's not i guess it's not wrong no but it's just as interesting man i don't know i don't know if it's my best game of all time but let us know what your best game of all time is uh over on twitter at switch it up show we would love to hear from you also before we go ahead and hear from you i got a few things that we have to get out this week and it's all the new releases over here on the switch it up show because we always have a ton of releases to share with you and this week my friends is really no different we have a very 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 large amount so we're gonna go ahead and start back um we're reaching back into october 30th which believe it or not was only on monday and the very first release that we're going to be talking about is king oddball it is four dollars and 99 cents on the nintendo eShop. and let me hit you with the synopsis here end the world with boulders blow up tanks crash helicopters squash puny humans collapse structures and hurl borders until nothing remains end the world the king swings a boulder back and forth with his tongue and you get to release it by pressing a button time to re- release accurate accurately and crush as many targets as possible with each boulder simply but simple but addictive uh, it kind of looks a little bit like angry birds but you're like this flying boulder in the sky and you're throwing uh different things uh from like rocks to grenades all types of stuff mr Trav, if i'm not mistaken we will be talking about this on a future episode is that correct we will in fact yeah king oddball four dollars 99 cents it seems like if you're a fan of angry birds you might want to check this one out the art looks super fun uh looks like the ball is like a zombie type thing looks interesting king oddball 
Next one up, we've got Perception. Yes. Uh, it is currently $14.99, and you get 20 points when you buy it digitally. Uh, a haunting narrative thriller starring a blind woman. Perception is a tense psychological thriller where players must uncover a mystery, the mysteries of a sinister estate with iconic echolocation. Oh, wow. <laughs> as their only sight. <laughs> <laughs> creating sound illuminates your environment but also ignites the house and the enemies within use cassie's delphi text to speech app along to speech app along with her intuition to uncover the mansion's history sounds like you need to text to speech app. <laughs> i really do man i'm having a hard time with these words perception is a great game man i am really really stoked on this one i've been dying to play it i've heard about it for a long while and it's a really unique idea. It looks a lot like the Daredevil Ben Affleck movie, uh, like that kind of sight the whole time, except yeah, yeah. done much better. There you go. So <laughs> I'm stoked to see it. I know. I think you got it, right? Yeah, I did. I did. I laid down the. I laid down the, the 12.99 for it. So, oh, dude, that's uh, amazing. So we might me. catch it on the YouTube and the uh, Twitch sometime soon. Yeah, I'm definitely planning on getting uh, on playing this. This looks like a good time. Dude, stoked. Uh, up next, we have Monster Jam. Crush it. Um, crush it. It takes fans back to authentic real-life stadiums for racing and freestyle events, including the site of Monster Jam's World Finals Sam Boyd Stadium. Choose your favorite official Monster Jam trucks, such as Grave Digger, Max D, <laughs> Monster Mutt, and many more. It's basically Monster Truck Game. I have never been to a Monster Truck show, but let me tell you, Mr. Trav, if... Given the opportunity, um, like when my child is old enough, I will definitely take him because I feel like it would just be stupid fun. Dude, <laughs> you gotta go. Is, is this game just five bucks? No, it's not. It's thirty nine ninety nine. Is the <laughs> oh my god way more expensive? But I mean, I mean, when you license Grave Digger, yeah, you you just gotta you gotta throw it on the fliff. I guess, man. It looks. I mean, it looks like monster. It, I don't know. It just looks like monster trucks. Like one of them. There's a shark. Uh, there's a shark truck. Oh, if all these trucks are real, like I'd just be losing my mind in the audience. I'd be like, this dude, is it's a crazy time. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, it, it's it's on the pricier side. Um, Monster Jam Crush It, thirty nine ninety nine. If there's a demo, I feel like it's worth checking out. Uh, if you have it, let us know because I would love to hear more about it. Absolutely. Uh, next one up, we got one straight from the vault of your ruined family night. Monopoly for the Nintendo Switch. It's thirty nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and you get forty points when you buy it digitally. America's favorite family board game, Monopoly, makes its debut on Nintendo Switch system with new ways to play. Experience three unique three D boards at home or on the go with up to six players in total, or take your game online and challenge players in quick matches. Customize your game by selecting from six official house rules chosen by Monopoly fans around the world. Hmm. Don't have time for a full game? Spin it up with special goals and shortened play sessions and action cards to move you around the board and penalize your opponents. Build your empire and trade your way to victory. And there's money bags twirling, twirling the stash. Nice. Just going at it. Uh, graphically, from what I'm seeing, do not pass go. I dig it. It looks, it looks good. Like I said, this has ruined a lot of family nights. Don't pretend it hasn't, Parker Brothers. Like, y if you see a game board flying out a window, you can guarantee it's Monopoly. Yeah, most likely. Wow, it really does look good graphically. But it look graphics. They look they look like they are way better than a, a Monopoly game needs to be. Yeah. Um, I would actually be really interested in checking this out. Yeah, because me too, I'm the kind of dude nice. that would love to just like throw down my Switch and be like, "You want to play Risk? You want to <laughs> play Monopoly?" Like, let's do that, but on the Switch, so that way I don't have to worry about the cat knocking down the pieces. I wonder if you could play this on... I wonder, can you play it online? Yeah, Oh, absolutely. Online. It's not online. That's awesome. Dude, we might have to do a Monopoly night some Friday. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that price is a little up there, but, I mean, it looks... It's up there. It looks, it looks nice. Like, it looks cool. It, it looks crisp. It does. I appreciate that. All right, sweet. Uh, up next, we have Cartoon Network Battle Crashers. It is thirty nine ninety nine. When Uncle Grandpa accidentally drives the UGRV through multiple dimensions, he picks up some surprise passengers in the form of Gumball, Steven Universe, Finn, Mordecai, and Clarence. Now they'll have to band together to defeat the evil shard creatures and set things right. 
Use each character's unique attacks and special moves to conquer the elements. Fight your way through all the levels and beat some brutal boss battles. Replay maps with special modifiers to switch up the fun and unlock <laughs> rooms along the way. Take on the single player challenge or grab up the three friends for multiplayer action in this crazy interdimensional adventure. Um, I don't know anything about Steven Universe. I have no idea who Gumball is. I am vaguely familiar with Flynn. Mordecai, I have no clue. And Clarence, don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, not, not my... Um, who's, the, who's like the Blue Jay one? Mordecai? Is that Mordecai? He looks cool. I feel like I've Mordecai seen... and Rigby of like... uh, regular show fame. I feel like I've seen him in something. Um, I love regular show. I would have much rather had Pops, but I'm happy to see Mordecai and Rigby. Lord knows I love Finn and Jake. They're my dudes. Steven Universe, he's a solid dude. Okay. He's learning a great few lessons as he goes along. I never caught an Uncle Grandpa, but I would be totally into this game if it had maybe a Johnny Bravo. Wow. Maybe a Dexter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a cow and chicken, you know. That's right. I'm dating myself, obviously, by saying this is a samurai Jack. Even I guess he's more Adult Swim now. Um, you yeah, know the the classics. Where are my cartoon cartoons? I guess. Yeah. But well, if you uh, if you're I, in the Cartoon Network, Cartoon Network, uh, Cartoon Network Battle Crashers, thirty nine ninety nine. Currently on the Nintendo eShop. That's it, sir. We got next up oh. Wheels of Arulia. Nine ninety nine on the Switch eShop, and you get ten points when you buy it digitally. Oops. Explore a new side of Italy in a game from the developers behind Photonica. Embark on an immersive road trip, meet dynamic characters, and discover yourself along the way. Yeah, this game looks Embark fun. On an immer- <laughs> What's that? This game looks fun. I'm excited, dude. This looks like. This looks like a great point-and-click adventure type. Embark on an immersive road trip through the gritty western coast of Italy during the roaring 70s. Play as Lala, a bold, spunky woman experienced in the sights and sounds of a tumultuous time in Italy's history while uncovering events from Lala's storied past. Take the road less traveled while meeting an unpredictable cast of dynamic characters along your journey and making detours along the way. Sounds like Sex in the City, the game. It does a little bit. Uh, it looks like to be like one of the first visual novels that's available in the North American eShop. Um, it is an interactive visual novel based on short moments in time during Layla's travels. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think those, I, I like visual novels because I'm pretty much like reading like a book or a comic. 16 different endings you can unlock. This sounds like this would be right up my girlfriend's alley. Yeah, this game looks this game looks cool. It's a shame because there's a lot of actual like if you go to the Japanese shop, there's a lot of cool visual novels and there's a lot of cool like mystery or suspense ones, but they don't mm-hmm. have any English support. So like even if you bought them, you couldn't really play them. I never really understood why they don't have more English support in like the other countries like stores. Doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I I I want to play it. You know, I'm pretty sure somebody else wants to play it. <laughs> we have listeners that love hearing about how we want to play it. You know, let us know what you wish was on the eShop. Maybe we'll do a segment. Something that needs to come to America. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> or at least European. I don't know. Get, yeah. a, get in our shop. You <laughs> we, know? We could stream it and fumble through it and have no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So uh, a couple more to get through here. And that's for the next one is going to be Super Beat Sports. Uh, I feel like this got pushed back, and we talked about it a little bit in the past. It is fourteen ninety nine over on the eShop. Um, looks the graphics look really like fun and cartoony. Kind of looks like a third person um, uh, Wii Sports, which I think is awesome. I wish they remade Wii Sports and put it out on the Switch. I'd pay hard earned money uh, for that. Uh, when an intergalactic crew of sports loving aliens aliens challenges you to and your friends to a music infused pentathlon, there's only one thing to do: grab the nearest garden gnome and take the field. Um, there's four different games that you can play. It looks like uh, one of them is Buddy Ball, uh, Wacky Bat, Gobble Golf, Netball, excuse me, five, and Rhythm Racket. Um, Buddy Ball kind of looks like it might be um, I don't know, maybe like baseball meets curling. Um, golf of, is of course golf. There is one that looks very similar to baseball and golf. Uh, there's a tennis-looking one. Uh, they look cool. They look like different takes on traditional games. Um, Super Beat Sports, fourteen ninety-nine over on the eShop. Might be worth a look. Maybe. Could be. We should check it out sometime. Let us know over at Switch It Up Show on Twitter. 
Next up, we've got Sparkle 2 Evo. It is $4.49 on the eShop. Doesn't look like you get any points when you buy it digitally, though. Climb your way through the evolutional ladder. Start as a little organism and transform into a magnificent aquatic being. Ooh. Control the evolution. Climb your way through the evolutional ladder. Uh, same thing it just said before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you grow the biggest sparkle in the world? Subtle, captivating, addictive. These three words describe the world of sparkle. <laughs> world in... <laughs> Dash, world in which you make a tiny aquatic creature evolve into becoming a grown, magnificent being. Hmm. Mm. Nice. We give you control over the sparkle's development, well-being, and you have one goal, to evolve whilst exploring the sparkle void. How many times can they say sparkle? A lot. Tons, it seems like. <laughs> this looks cool. This looks this looks pretty cool. It looks kind of like those games, like those flash games, where you would be like a little fish, and then you slowly like eat bigger fish, um, or that big one that's going around Ar Argrio IO or something Ar AR dot IO, um, you know, where you're the little ball and you just keep eating other little balls until you become a big ball and you just keep going. Um, I'm into that kind of stuff because I'm so basic, that's you know, it. so. I would totally play this, and it is right around my price point because even after tax, I'm pretty sure I'm not breaking the full fiver. Ah, nice. So man. that's quality. Gotta love it. Got to. Awesome, man. We're working our way through it here. Only a few more less left. Oh. Uh, next one is going to be more fight for fourteen ninety nine on the Nintendo eShop. Let me take a deep breath for this one. <gasps> Set in a distant future where humanity has colonized the far reaches of space. Morphite follows the story of Myra Kale, a young woman whose life takes a sudden turn when a simple mission develops into an epic interstellar journey revealing her mysterious past in relation to a coveted substance called Morphite. <laughs> um, that is one sentence, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> they they are they they're throwing all the grammar rules right out the window. Um, this looks like a first person, um, almost like cross between um like shooter and um like I don't know like exploration game. Uh, it almost reminds me of No Man's Sky a little bit. You're going through different worlds, uh, encountering like different like beings. Um, the graphics are like very like it's like that cell shaded, but like the like blockier. Um, than mm -hmm. that, uh, it doesn't look bad. It just looks like you know it, you, you either you're either gonna love or hate this um, this art form. Uh, it does look cool. It reminds it does remind me a lot. It does look a lot like No Man's Sky. Um, so if you're in for something like first person uh, with a little bit of uh, you know space and interstellar journeys, uh, you might want to check this out. They even bust out the words uh, exotic flora and fauna. Um, so that's like straight out of No Man's Sky. Uh, this is fourteen dollars ninety nine cents over on the eShop. Definitely might be worth a peek. Absolutely, my dude. Uh, this one, something we're going to review in an upcoming episode. It's going to be Chess Ultra. That's going to be $12.49. 20 points, you buy it digitally on the eShop. Now, I'm more of a Chinese checkers man myself. Mm. Well, you, we, but you're more of an Uno man. I, dude, <laughs> if I could play Uno against anyone, that's how my Thanksgivings end. With me just like wrecking Uno on everyone, you that could... draw four card. You back could... to back to the brilliant man's game. Uh, introducing the most breathtaking chess game ever made. Chess Ultra features stunning visuals, seamless online multiplayer, and Grandmaster approved AI to offer the ultimate chess experience. Oh my god! Do you remember that Deep Blue, that machine that played chess? Was that the one that beat the dude? I believe it was. It was the chess machine that beat the guy. <laughs> we, we, st we strive for accuracy here on this original <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So I'm worried that this is that AI and it's taking control. Uh, the image they have on here is the king piece. And it's all spiky, kind of Game of Thrones looking, golden, and there's fire coming out of the eyes of the king and both horses he's perched upon, that sounds which awesome. is also his throne. That sounds great. Looks yeah. wild. There's a Dracula the book right on the chess table yeah, and a cup is. of coffee, what looks like rose petals. This is the, the weirdest room to be in. 
It, oh, I want to know about this guy's life. Like, who's playing chess? It, it looks like there's all types of different chess pieces. Whoa, there's some crazy looking ones, too. There's cray looking chess pieces. I, I actually enjoy chess. Um, I'm not that good at it, obviously, because it takes thought. So I'm excited to play it. I'm excited to sharpen my mind. And I'm stoked to give it a review because I used to play chess all the time I on go. the uh, Windows 2000. I, that's the, the epitome of technology with that the system right there. That was <laughs> it. Cool, man. Yeah, it looks neat. And then lastly, we'll wrap it up with the Neo Geo Art of Fighting 3. Complete. It wouldn't be a week without a Neo Geo classic. Absolutely. Art of Fighting 3 is a fighting game released by SNK in 1996. As a side story in the Art of Fighting series, it portrays the drama and battles of various fighters. With the ultimate KO system and other mechanics, it makes a stake in the new frontier of 2D fighting games. Again, as every single Neo Geo release, it is $7.99 on the Nintendo eShop. Um, I mean, again... Just put out, just put out like a big compilation, charge sixty dollars, and call it a day. Um, I don't know who's paying, yeah. <laughs> paying this much for the same, we more say or less it all the, the same time. game, all the time. Crazy, craziness. Speaking of craziness, we're gonna go ahead and jump right over into the Let's Play segment, which is basically our review, and we're gonna hit you up with not one, not two, but three games this week. So, Mr. Trav, would you like to go ahead and take it away? Oh, dude, I absolutely can. So, the first game uh, that I reviewed was Time Recoil. It is currently $13.99 on the Nintendo eShop, and it comes to us from our good, good friends over at 10 Tons. Uh, they are a awesome, like, top-down shooting game uh, house, I want to say, because they put out all these games. We've reviewed a bunch of their games lately that all have the same kind of play vibe, I want to say. Mm -hmm. Like those... Um, if you've ever played like Retro City Rampage, um, if you've ever played like old school GTAs, like GTA One type stuff, yeah, um, there's tons of these style games out there. But let me tell you, ten tons here, they're doing it well. They're doing it real well. This game, Kill to Slow Time, Time Recoil is a top-down shooter where you kill to slow time, experience amazing slow-motion gunfights, and trigger spectacular special moves. Your mission is to save the world from Mr. Time, a time-manipulating mad scientist turned evil dictator. Shoot, dodge, and dash through the evil empire, guns blazing, and unleash your superpowers. It is very fun, okay? A lot of times I have a difficult time staying hooked on a game like this because they they are basic, but not like my puzzly basic. This was fun because it gave me a little bit of story. I wish there was voiceover uh, for it, but it, they, you know, it was still good. It was a fun time. It's kind of kitsch, kind of tongue in cheek with some of the stuff that goes on. Um, you may see some characters that seem very familiar to you. As if they were plucked from other popular movies. <laughs> um, I think that's part of the fun of playing these kinds of games and like seeing the story. So I don't want to spoil all that for you. But it's it's fun. It's legitimately fun. Um, and I really enjoy the gimmick that they have in this one. Where every time you kill someone, you slow down time. Yeah, that's It's cool. part of the story. It's a neat little... Um, it's a neat thing where, you know, lab accident type stuff happens. Uh, don't want to go too much into it again because it's pretty fun um going through all this graphically it's pretty good i like it i think it i think it's you know it could use a little bit more smoothing things do seem a little boxy but it's it's fun it is a very fun game and that's what i want to stress here is that i did have a difficult time putting it down even while like mario odyssey was out because we had to review this one huh. and i was like but mario i know i need i need my moons Gah. But this one had me like playing it. Like while I was in that uh waiting room, I really enjoyed the time I had playing it. And it seemed like people were interested in the tunes. Uh, because I was playing it on very full volume. I wanted to be that rude, rude dude. <laughs> you would be. <laughs> so yeah, uh definitely check it out. It is $13.99 again on the eShop currently. Uh I want to say that I'm gonna give this game a Oh, it's that's solid score, man. Definitely solid. Right? Solid, solid game. Uh, good play. Good time. Uh, fun stuff. 
Awesome. Definitely fun stuff. Definitely check it out again from our friends over at 10 Tons. Awesome. Good times, man. Good times. Uh, so we're going to switch gears a little bit, and we're going to go ahead with uh, the game that I uh, took on this week, and that's going to be Skyride, uh, which is a much lower price point over on the Nintendo uh, eShop. It is $7, earning yourself 10 points. An action game in which a player will ride on a high-speed bike and defeat a large group of approaching enemies. The player will fly over the ground, in the sky, in various fields, and fight utilizing four weapons. We aim for the game which offers a sense of exhilaration through routing the enemies all at once, in addition to a sense of exhilaration felt through <laughs> flying around in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is actually... I looked it up because I wanted to double check. Uh, in the very infancy of the show, we re- I reviewed a game called Room the Night Sky, um, mm-hmm. which is basically the kids' version of this game, where you are like a witch and you're flying around in the sky and you're shooting at things. Uh, and it's very like, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a perfect game for kids because it's super simple and you're really not doing too much. There's not that much to it. You're kind of just flying around, going fast, breaking, and stuff like that. This game kind of borrows that same mechanic. I checked to see if it was the same developer. It's not because um, I was shocked to, to learn that because it's it's more or less the same game as Room the Night Sky, uh, although it is tuned up a little bit. So basically in this, that's the description. There is no story aside from that. You kind of just jump yep. in um, and like you, like, you know, you're on this, uh, basically like if you play Destiny, you're on this thing that looks like a, uh, like a sparrow. Or if you've seen Star Wars, it looks like a speeder bike. Uh, and you basically just like hit a, hit a button. Uh, I think it's the right trigger uh, to start your engine. And then you're flying around in this like 3D world. Now I'm going to say the graphics are definitely a step up here than they are uh, in Room the Night Sky. Uh, if you look around, um, you can see all types of different, like, you're basically, like, everything's floating. There's, like, these mountains. There's all types of industrial, like, equipment around. Um, and it's all set in, like, a futuristic world. Now, when the enemies show up, you basically have to kill them all. Um, that's your whole your whole job. Um, and there are all types of different enemies. They all look they all look different, and there's swarms of them. Um, and as you're flying around, um, you're using one stick to fly around, one stick to look, uh, and you have a few different attacks. You have like a machine gun attack. You have um, like a cannon that's like kind of slow shooting, and then shoots out like a big bomb. There's a rocket, uh, and then there's um, like another like like laser type of like weapon that you have. Um, and you're doing all this as you're flying and you have to continually keep moving so that you can shoot all the enemies. And as they kind of get killed, more of them come out and eventually you'll kill them and you'll move on to the next level. But then it's like rinse and repeat. Um, and you'll get like, you know, you have so much health. Uh, and the idea is you just progress through the levels and get the highest score you can and kind of keep going. It is a little, it's a little fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The problem is just the con- a little. The problem is the controls are so wonky that it's just not like it. It. I mean, it's not. Fr- it's not frustrating, but it's just weird. It's just strange. It's awkward. Did um, it have the option to do motion? Oh God, that would be even worse. Um, but no, really, no. Um, I think where the what they're getting from is um, a couple year a couple years ago, I went to Japan and the arcades are still really big there, uh, and they have these games basically where you stand where you stand up. Uh, and you're like facing like this big screen and it's almost like a light gun game essentially but you pick up two different guns uh, and like you're using the two guns to like shoot at the screen but you're also like moving around with them um, and it's like that type of game what that like it, it, it would almost be better like I might you might have better luck with this maybe if you detach the joy cons and you like uh, and you play with it that way um, but it was the controls were just still so so off. Um, the music sounds pretty cool, but it's the actual like mix on it is kind of low. So as you're playing, like you can turn you can turn it up, but you won't hear the music as pronounced as the other effects in the game. Uh, I wonder if in the like sub menu sub menu if you could turn that up or not. I wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't. Um, but <laughs> uh, but that was one that was one thing that I noticed. But the music was still pretty cool. Um, I do like the like the game itself. Once you once you kind of get a little more used to the controls, like it is a little bit fun. I don't think there's anything deep there. There's no there's no story behind it really. You're just shooting all these enemies, and when you start to kill a whole bunch of them, and it's just like combo, and it goes really high. Like it look like it looks fun. Um, but I don't know. It's just it's just not it's just not for me. Um, I like the idea of it. I feel like if it was implemented a little bit better, it might be it might be really good. Uh, that being said, I think that this game might be for somebody out there. There might be someone who has a good time with this. Uh, but the, for me, the controls just aren't quite there, and because of that, the game suffers. Um, it's a seven dollar game. Um, 
I feel like that price isn't isn't horrible or anything. Uh, but I feel like you can. There's better ways to spend seven dollars on the eShop, in my opinion. Um, in its current form, I'd probably give this game. I'd say like a three. Okay. Yep. Um, I dig that. Yeah, right. And then we both actually uh, got into the next game, sir, which is going to be Night Terrors. We did. Yeah, man. This game is a straight up bargain. This might be the cheapest game we've it ever is. reviewed. It, it's two ninety nine right now on mm-hmm. the eShop. It doesn't look like you get any points when you buy it digitally, but let me tell you what, two ninety nine is well worth the price. Oh my gosh, dude! Yes, hands down, hands down. I I was very very into this game. Do you do you want to read off the description? You want me to do that? I'll totally go through a blood curdling demon slashing dash of death. Witness the horrifying adventures of a mysterious suit of armor known only as. The knight, armed with a mighty sword and equipped with a blood-red wings that allow flight, the knight desperately races through the countryside, never stopping for any respite or consideration. He must face and vanquish a never-ending onslaught of bloodthirsty ghouls, flaming skulls, and unspeakable horrors, while jumping over spiked pits and flying through small gaps. If he takes three hits or allows three enemies to pass, it's game over. Night Terrors goes straight for the jugular. It's a lurid mashup of side-scrolling gameplay styles that will remind you of runners that are endless and birds that are flappy. (laughs) (laughs) Special effects like shaking screens and time-stopping magnify the impact of every enemy interaction. Once you're hooked, the game keeps pulling you back in to increase your high score and unlock more features. What's more, the procedurally generated levels ensure an unlimited replayability. It's a different game each and every time you play. There you go. That is very true. Very good description. I'm glad they know what they are. I'm, I mean, you'd be surprised. We have read some descriptions that really do not do not know, and we've played some games that just do they not know. Have, <laughs> don't even. They don't know. They don't care. These physical contacts. Uh, I mean, yes, but one of them was really fun. <laughs> well, hey, I. <laughs> Well, I couldn't figure out the uh, one. It was insane. But I could figure this out. Yes, And this easily. was a great time. Like it says, it's a lot like Flappy Bird. And I was on that craze. You know, I was there. I love these line rider type games where, you know, I used to play Copter back in the day. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and I'd sit there for like an hour just being like, I can do better. And I don't know why. I don't know what it was, but I was just like, I can do better. There's no reason I should have had a score that low. And I didn't. It's not like I was like posting on a worldwide leaderboard or anything. I was just like, I'm, I'm better than that. And that's what this game feels like. Except that this game does it a lot more fun um, because it gives you unlockables, and that's stuff that I love. It's really only what two buttons. Yeah. You got two buttons to choose from. That, that's it. Uh, with, Attack with and jump. jump. Yeah. Yeah. It's slash. It's jump slash. And, and it's jump a bunch so that way you flap mm-hmm. with your wings. And then you get a bunch of different like power-ups, unlockables, things like that as you progress. You make it to levels, but it's all just still running. Um, it's it's so much fun. Again, I once I picked this up, it was hard again to go back to Mario. I spent a, like a good night just playing this, and I didn't even realize it because I was like, I can do better. Yeah. I know I can make it to level five. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. Which I did. I made it to five. Amazingly. It's not. Yeah. It's. It's definitely. It's not easy. Uh. The. This game. It does get harder as you play on. But it. Do, it's not impossible. I feel like it, it's difficulty. Like. Like it ramps it up kind of as you go. I know it's procedurally generated, so I guess that's technically not possible. But like it. It feels like the more you play it, the better you get at it. Um. That being said, it does require you to pay pretty close attention because if you do let three enemies pass or you lose all of your health, um, you know it's uh, it's over. What I do like is that throughout the level you can get more health, uh, and it seems mm-hmm. like if you continually keep hitting the enemies, you get more points for them as you like you know take the next ones down. Um, and I really love the power ups when you when I got like the throwing axe uh, and then you can like <laughs> yeah. slash and then the axe gets thrown like it just it looks crazy. There's like a ton of stuff on the screen. Uh, the enemies are really well done. Uh, there's like flaming skulls. There's zombies. Um, the the graphics are really cool. They remind me of super ghouls and ghosts. There are ghosts exactly. and bats. Um, and I love that you don't have to that, that it's basically it's like one of those procedural runners that you're just always moving. So you don't mm-hmm. really have to focus on move. It's like you said, Seth. It's only those two buttons: attack and and jump, uh, and a couple times to to uh, to flap or like fly in the air. Um, 
and you know they're both important and at the speed of the level didn't seem like it was too crazy uh it, it was fair in the point that you wanted to keep on playing it even if you died like you said you're like i know i can do better and a lot of exactly. times and a lot of times you can but i'm telling you like there are some things that are that in, in it that are just like hard like the mode where you're flying and that's all you're doing is flying yeah um that one is fun but man i'm like it was a, it was a struggle to try to get to that fifty thousand points um like it not, really was man like it's not it's not easy but i feel like because of that like they said there is replayability in it because it's not so hard that you get frustrated you know it's like oh that was fun like like it was it was refreshing uh in that way uh, i had i had a lot of fun playing this game for sure tons and tons of replayability it, it's a classic game for sure um how did you my o- my only like gripe with it i guess i would say is that like I feel like I would get distracted just trying to look at the enemies. Like I would just be like, "Oh, that's a new enemy type," and then I'd be like, "Damn it, I hit it!" <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> and now I lost the heart, and now it's gone. Away. Now it's like flying by me. I'm like, "But that's cool," you know? But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Mm-mm. You know? It's just like I was getting too into it. I was being like, "Oh, I just want to watch him run for a minute." So I think that this would be a great game to stream sometime. Like I just want to watch somebody play this for a good while it's interesting because i really like the um i feel like like this worked i played this handheld and it was perfect handheld um oh 100 I, I was thinking about like i'm like okay i'm like i definitely want to stream this but i think when i have to use like that joy con dock um mm-hmm. to, to play it because i want it as close to a handheld experience as possible i feel like this would be weird on that pro controller um like i like those two buttons just like right there uh i don't know that or this is one of those games where like the rhythm is so important that i don't want to do anything to mess it up (laughs) yeah um but uh, i had a great time playing this man this is a really good game totally into it what would you give you what's with score i normally don't like games like this um like flappy bird i never really got into um but this is cool because it's like a blend of uh like one of those style games with like a traditional like 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 almost like 2d platformer in some parts there's a lot of unlockables um music is cool like i'm a i'm a fan um i know let's go with oh man that's hard man i had a lot of fun i feel like i'm just tossing out fives lately but i feel like this might have to be for what it is like i think it's awesome combined with I, dude the, combined i'm with right there price, with you i, I gotta give price. it a five as well yeah because i like i said like i said i'm i'm kind of versed in these runner games here okay and it's not and I've I've played a runner game or two where I'm like I need to throw I'm ready to throw like a controller against the wall mm-hmm. or I'm like ready to smash my mouse and be like this is not fair it is not responding these things are stupid uh, you know but it it's perfect for what it is and it keeps you playing it gives you stuff it gives you goals and it never made me feel like mad at it like i wanted to smash the switch i was ready to just keep playing and enjoying the time that's what that's what it's all about man that's why that's why we play but let us know over on uh you know the wonderful world wide web uh you know why you play what games you're playing this week and of course as always if you ever get bored switch it up (laughs) 